Good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on which time you're watching me. Uh, my name is Mark, um, I am Mark Choley, I'm head of the English department and it is my pleasure to introduce you today to the pleasures of Harvard referencing, without which your assignments will be an academic disaster. So without further ado, let's begin with a warning. This is an adult rated presentation, so if you are of a sensitive academic nature, please look away now, otherwise the rest of you, please focus. Any piece of academic writing that is not properly referenced will incur the wrath of your tutor or tutors. Ah, in case you're wondering, wrath means intense anger or fury. Okay, so incur the wrath of your tutors and most probably will result in a referral if you are lucky or accusations of plagiarism, which is the worst academic sin you can commit, apart from falling asleep in your junior lecture, of course, or missing an English lesson. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. Anyway, joking apart, plagiarism is serious. Take it seriously. Academic writing requires discipline. And part of that dis academic discipline involves, yes, you are right, using the Harvard author date referencing style appropriately and correctly when putting together an essay, a report, or a dissertation. So, now, I want to talk about, first, common misconceptions. Just in case you know, you're puzzled, misconception means an idea which is false, which is based on insufficient knowledge, in other words, mistaken belief. Right, look carefully. Common misconception number one. I don't need to reference this section of my writing because I've used my own words. Wrong. Wrong, my friends. Absolutely wrong. Paraphrasing is an important academic skill. Yes. Paraphrasing means expressing in a shorter, clearer or different way what someone has said or written. Since you are paraphrasing somebody else's words, you need to cite that source. Common misconception two. I didn't reference those uh, paragraphs because they are from the notes I took during a lecture. Wrong. They may be your notes, but where did you get them from? Since you are using information obtained from your lecturer, you need to cite that source. Common misconception three. I didn't reference this paragraph because it's based on my personal observations and experience whilst working for company X. Wrong. All statements of fact or supposition, unless they constitute common knowledge, need to be referenced. So, in this case, you should reference yourself. Example, when I worked for company X in 2011, I observed, found, saw, learnt, came to the conclusion that blah, 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 blah. Now you're safe. You've referenced yourself. The reader knows where that information has come from. OK, let's now get to the nitty gritty. In text citation, author prominent. By that I mean we are focusing on the author. OK? Now look, look carefully, forget the after. Look at the before. Just look at that. I'll read it. There are six different ways in which culture evolves. Some of these can be influenced by leaders and some cannot. Excellent English. Brilliant. Brilliant ideas. Brilliant. And you've just failed your assignment. That is absolute disaster. That is a cut and paste job. Now look at the after. A few little changes. Now, Shine, 1999, 
suggests that there are six different ways in which culture evolves. Full stop. In his view, comma, some of these can be influenced by leaders and some cannot. Look at that magic transformation by literally just simply the inclusion of three words. Shine, sorry, four words. Shine, suggests, and in his view, well, a few more than three, four, but you see that what I'm trying to get at. That is what referencing is about. Right, let's now turn to in-text citation, information prominent. This time, in other words, I'm now focusing on the information that's more important than the actual author. Look again at the before. Yeah. Culture is everywhere in organisational life. It is vitally important for the organisation because of its impact on performance. Absolutely. These are statements you need in any kind of assignment on management and culture. But at the moment, this is an academic disaster. Your tutor is going to throw that back at you. Now look after. Look at it. All we've done, same sentence, and just before the full stop, we've put in brackets, Cameron and Green. Ah, no problem at all, two authors. I know where you take this from. That's the only change you needed. Suddenly, academic integrity is there. Uh, you are passing. OK, so I hope we've got the main point there. So it's not rocket science. Well, I say it's not rocket science. However, common errors occur even on this simple basis. So please focus now. Common errors you must avoid uh, in order to get your pass, merit or distinction. Right, common error number one. Right, have a look. What's wrong with the sentence below? Got 10 seconds. Have a look. OK, spot the error. I hope you have. Well, correct, I hope. When using author prominent style, do not forget that any author you cite will need to fit into the grammar pattern of the sentence. Brackets should just go around the date. So now we've got nicely, according to Shine, yeah? Before it was according to bracket. Well, excuse me, brackets don't speak. Brackets don't give you information. So this is author prominent, author fits into the grammar, whatever your sentence you're saying. So according to Shine, brackets 999, there are six different ways in which culture evolves. Small change, but important. Take a close look. Common error number two. What's wrong with this sentence? The sentence below. Yeah, it's a few seconds. Hopefully, yeah. OK. You should have spotted there. If you do not know the grammar pattern of a reporting verb, then don't use that verb. You can describe something. You can describe how something happens. But you can't say, describe that. So you've ruined your sentence because you're using a reporting verb, you don't know the grammar of it. So why not? Shine 1999 says, claims, argues, suggests that there are six different ways, blah, blah, blah. All those verbs take that. Describes doesn't. So if you're not sure of the reporting verb, don't use it. Comma, let's go to the next one. Common error number three. Again, take a close look. What's wrong? OK. Yeah. When using information prominent style, do not forget basic punctuation rules. In this case, a full stop is missing. Look, have you spotted that? After the, uh, the bracket, shine, there should be a full stop. There are two separate sentences, a very common error. Don't forget your basic punctuation rules. Common error number four. Are you all still awake? Not so bad, only a few more common errors coming, but be alert. Take a close look. This is the important one. This is the academic disaster. Have a look. You've got five seconds. Make a, make a choice. There is a mistake there. I'm guaranteeing. Yeah, decided. So, when using author prominent style, check for subject verb agreement. In this case, there are two authors, so the verb must be plural. Cameron and Green argue that, not argues, argues is singular verb, it's one person. Don't make that mistake. And then uh, we come to slide, uh, sorry, common error number five. Another look. This one should be easier. Yeah, we're happy. 
Right. Wrong tense. I hope you spotted that. That's a very common error. Everyone seems to want to put the verb in the past just because of research in the past. No. Wrong tense when referring to research that is of current interest or relevance, you should use the present tense. That absolutely makes sure on that one. So we could say Cameron and Green, 2009, state, claim, argue, maintain, point out, suggest, that culture is everywhere in all days of life. Now, nice, perfect, small little change. It shows that you are in control of your academic writing. So, you may ask, when should the past tense be used with reporting verbs? And what about the present perfect? Yep, good questions. Well, when making very general observations, yeah, use the present perfect. Example, it's been argued by Smith that da da da. Recent research da -da -da, has shown that, yeah. Simple general observations, present perfect. You should use the past tense, this is the important one, with procedural verbs when referring to academic activity in the past. I'm going to emphasize that. Past verbs are academic activity, not conclusions. Activity in the past or when you're referring to ideas that are no longer current. So, for example, it's interesting to note that some research work which was carried out, conducted, done in 1984, Barnard 1985, examined, analysed, tested, blah, 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 and found, discovered, identified, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, keep it on that level. But remember, when you're actually doing the actual current research, present tense, academic activity in the past, past simple and simply general observations. Yeah, present perfect if you're confident. If you're not confident, keep to the present tense. Last common error. Dan, 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 what is wrong? Okay, we should have spotted that one. Small but important. When directly quoting the exact words from a text, you should include the page number in your citation. Very simple thing, but just there, just put in brackets 2009, page 102. That is important. Take it out and say, well, hang on a minute. You could have invented that, so you have to put the page number down. Okay, yeah. And that, my friends, is the end of my presentation. Any questions? Yes? Panic? How do I cite sources from the internet? How do I cite three or four authors uh, or more? <laughs> How do I cite an author already citing the text? How do I cite a newspaper article? How do I cite etc., uh, etc., etc., etc.? Et <laughs> I've got hundreds of questions. Help. Relax. Help is at hand. To answer any specific question relating to a specific type of citation, you need to refer to a style guide. Now, my recommendations, and also recommendations of the college, for an online style guide, simply Google the following words. Anglia Ruskin Referencing. And that's recommended by University of Wales. Use that style guide, you're 100% safe. It is a, um, student friendly, very easy to use. Any doubts you got, you use that. Or, if you like me, you prefer to consult a book, then I recommend very strongly that you purchase the following book. Cite them right, The Essential Referencing Guide, written by Richard Pears and Graham Shields and published by Pear Tree, sorry, Pear Tree Books. Now I've got a copy upstairs. It's constantly being borrowed by students, but excuse me, and it costs eight pounds, the Waterstones down the road, Invest a little bit in your academic future. Get the book. I can tell you it will save you so much time. Anything about the internet, which is the usual thing you've got to worry about, the very, is it uh, with a title, no author, any sort of how to um, 
uh, reference, for example, your tutor. It's all there. And it's all there nicely laid out for you. Just flick over the page. You have it there. You're in control. Okay? So, for any other further questions, I can usually be found conversing with nature in my office at the front of the college or try room 311. Um, I shall be presenting a second, I will do a second presentation, if you like this one, if I'm still hired, on referencing to do with the reference list. That's quite important. All we've done today is in-text citations, but equally important are reference lists, but that's the next presentation. In the meantime, good luck in your assignments, and thank you for listening to me.